These days, a lot of hikers are using GoPros and iPhones to capture their adventures on the trail. And if you're trying to stay fast and light, that's the way to go. It's not bad. But I know some of you are yearning for a little bit more in terms of picture quality and video quality. So uh, this is the video for you. My friends and I recently completed a film called Highline. Highline follows five friends as they traverse a fairly unknown mountain range over the course of 10 days. And the film was good enough to score a distribution deal. And we shot it all with cameras that were small enough and light enough to carry backpacking. So first of all, we were shooting a film. This was never intended for YouTube. So quality was a priority, but at the same time, we knew that we couldn't carry 40 pounds worth of cinema grade camera gear over the course of 10 days through rugged terrain and mountains and stuff. That, that just wasn't gonna work, that'd be impossible. So we had to do a fair amount of research and be creative in order to come up with some solutions that were feasible on the trail. The fairly obvious solution was the Sony Alpha series. 70% of the film was shot on this dude right here. This is a Sony a6500, I love this camera, and the more recent Sony a6600, which unfortunately was not available to us at the time, but both are really cool cameras, totally recommend them. Considering the quality, both are small and lightweight, both shoot excellent 4K video, 3840 by 2160 if you wanna get geeky about it. Both have exceptional autofocus, both have large 24 megapixel APS-C sensors to achieve a nice shallow depth of field, which is important for a cinematic look. Uh, it's also good for low light. The preamps are clean for recording audio with an external mic, which was a priority for us. And both shoot excellent still photos in JPEG and RAW. Both cameras offer picture profiles, which was kind of a big deal for us. Picture profiles give you different options so you can expand your dynamic range. We shot with uh, a format called S-Log2, Sony Log2, and out of all the testing that we did, that's the one we settled on with our colorist, and uh, yeah, really that, that provides the best option right there. If you're not working with a colorist though, you might want to research that a little bit or just stick with the standard profile. The more recent Sony a6600 is definitely the better camera in my opinion. First of all, it has this cute little flip up screen here so you can go to selfie mode and shoot vlogs on the trail, that kind of deal. So that is nice to have. It has improved color science, which is certainly nice to have. And uh, the, the thing is, it does weigh an ounce more. So the Sony a6600 is one ounce more than the Sony a6500. And I, I get it, as backpackers, we're all about saving weight. But the good news is, the good news is that the Sony a6600, even though it's one ounce more, it gets two and a half times the battery life. So you don't have to bring as many batteries. So in the end, this is definitely the lighter option. These are both very capable cameras, but they're not without their flaws. The worst flaw in my opinion is the rolling shutter. Rolling shutter is that like jello -y effect that you get when you pan too quick from one subject to the next. And it's ruined a few shots for me, but if you're careful, you're gonna be fine. Don't worry about it too much, but you know, just be aware of it. The second flaw affects the Sony A6600 is this. See this little flip up screen, how cool that is? Remember I told you about that? It's great, right? Um, the thing is when you're using an external microphone, you can't see it. You just see fluffy windscreen. So that's, that's not fun. I don't know how they managed to let that one through, but yeah, it's an issue. Um, the, bit, well, the best way to solve that is just to learn how to see through fluffy windscreens. The third flaw, which is more of a, a mild lacking, is that the, yeah, the, you know, these both have stabilization. They call it IBIS, in-body image stabilization. And it, it's nice to have, I'm glad that that feature is there. It does stabilize the image slightly, but it's more like vibration reduction. It's not really as good as some of the other cameras. For example, the Panasonic GH5 is really good with stabilization. This doesn't even compare to that in terms of stabilization, but all the other benefits and picture quality are better, so it's still worth getting these. The last gripe, which is probably the worst of the gripes if you ask our colorist, is the 8-bit color limitation. This is not a cinema grade camera. This thing does not weigh 40 pounds and isn't this big and it didn't cost us $100,000. This is like a consumer grade camera. So they had to cut somewhere and that cutting involved the color stuff. So it almost shoots 8-bit color, which is fine. On YouTube, it's gonna look incredible. If you're making an indie film, you can make it look fine. Because we shot in that log format, Sony Log 2, our, our colorist was able to get a lot out of it, so we were fine there, but just something to be aware of, 8-bit color limitation. There you go. All said though, for the size, for the weight, for backpacking, for hiking, for anything like that, this is really just my recommendation. I love this thing, it's very capable. If you wanna make a short film, if you just wanna go on day hikes and take really pretty pictures or you know, video clips, this is gonna be really good for you. So there you go. Sony A6600, look it's dancing. It's dancing. <laughs> Let's talk lenses. When I'm backpacking or hiking, I like to split lenses into two different categories, daytime lenses and nighttime lenses. They're very different use cases in my opinion. 
I usually prefer prime lenses. Prime lenses, by the way, are just lenses that don't zoom in or out. They're fixed focal length. They tend to be better quality. They tend to be sharper and better in low light. I just prefer them. But when you're hiking, you're on the move. So that, that changes things, right? In the case of Highline, when we, when we were shooting our film, uh, the co-director and I were following five people as they were hiking across the mountains. These guys were always moving. And it didn't make sense to get them to stop every two minutes to change lenses. That just wasn't feasible. We would never get to the end. So we made some, we made a compromise and we both used zoom lenses instead. And zoom lenses are, you know, they're not too bad. They're fine, they work. My primary daytime lens was the Sony Zeiss 16 to 70 millimeter F4 lens. It's a small, nice, convenient lens. It lets you change focal lengths on the fly, which is cool. Uh, you can go from wide landscape to semi-zoomed in type shots and everything in between. By the way, that's really important to vary your shots. If you have all wide shots all the time, you're gonna have a very boring video or film. It's just, yeah, vary your shots, it's good. The F4 aperture means it'll never be good in low light. It just, it can't do that. But during the daytime hours, you don't need low light performance, right? It's, it's sunny out. There's the sun and stuff, you have light. The lens that was not available to us at the time, but I really wish was, is the newer Sony 16 to 55 millimeter G series lens. This is a much better lens. The quality is better, the sharpness is better. And the big thing is that it has a F2.8 aperture. It has a wider iris, so it lets in more light, so it's better in low light. So basically it's more versatile because of that, because you can use it early in the morning, all the way up to dusk. You're covered. One lens covers everything during the day. It's great. There's two other lenses in the daytime category I'm gonna to recommend to you as, as backpackers and hikers. They're fairly supplemental lenses, I would call them, because you don't need them all the time. But the first one is the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter F4 lens. Again, this is a F4 aperture, so it's gonna work great during the day, not so much at night, but it is crazy wide. This thing is like super, super wide, 10, 10 millimeters. So it's basically like, kind of like a GoPro view. You do get the lens distortion that happens with really wide lenses, but that's life. If you need crazy wide, this is good to have. So there you go, 10 to 18 millimeter. On the opposite end of that spectrum, we have the Sony 50 millimeter 2.8 macro lens. Macro lenses are great because you can get really close up tiny things like little, some people use it for bugs and like dragonflies. I don't like bugs, so I didn't do that. Um, but I did use it heavily for like little tiny shrubbery, like little tiny like flowers and stuff. Whenever I wanted to get intimate details, I used this lens and it was great for that. It has a nice creamy bokeh in the background. So basically you can isolate your subject really well and then make everything in the background look all creamy and smooth. And that's kind of a cool effect. Um, actually the opening shots in Highline were with this lens, uh, the little sewing machine needle. And on the trail, I pretty much just used it for little tiny flowers and stuff. So good lens, ish. The autofocus is horrible, basically unusable. It's like, bleh, bleh, not bleh, 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 bleh. no autofocus, just don't even bother using it. I just use it in manual mode. I much prefer the Sony 2.8 90 millimeter lens. This is a way sharper, way superior lens, but it's almost a pound heavier than this guy. Like this is like way bulkier and heavier. And when it came to on the trail use, I needed something that was smaller. So I made the sacrifice, stuck with the 50 millimeter, got some good shots out of it. I was glad that I had it. You're probably gonna notice the lack of telephoto lenses in my kit. Uh, I have a hard time with telephoto. You know, as a backpacker, it's all about like the wide landscapes and then the foreground stuff and, and everything in between. But like, really the only time I would think to need a telephoto lens is for wildlife, right? That's when I've used them and it's, it's great to have for that case. But the thing is, usually it's fleeting. So you're hiking, right? And then you see some bear in the distance or some moose. You're like, oh, that's great. I wanna get a shot of that. You have to drop your pack pull out this giant telephoto lens, screw it on your camera, point it in the right direction, and by then the animal has like ran away or has eaten you or something. Like you've lost that opportunity. So I really struggle with it because of that. So I'm gonna, I, I, I do have a solution for that. I'm gonna go into that in a separate video. So look for that in the future. So something else to consider when you're shooting a film, when you're trying to get a film look out of a camera, is that you need to be shooting in 24p, so 24 frames per second with a 50th shutter. So one slash 50 should be your shutter. Those should be constants for you, unless you're shooting high frame rate stuff. That's a different story. But basically just know 24p with a shutter of 150, that normally means you only have two other options to control your light, your ISO, and your ISO is basically like a volume knob for your sensor. And you usually wanna have that down as low as possible to help eliminate noise. And the second thing you have to control light is your aperture, and that's how big the iris is in your little lens. And the higher you crank your aperture to like F18 or F22, whatever, then it gets darker. And then when you open it up to F1.8 or 1.4, then it's really bright. During the daytime, regardless of all that stuff, it's usually too bright. 
it, it's just usually, usually like blowing out your images. That's a major issue when, you, when you're maintaining that 150th shutter. So the only option at that point becomes NDs, neutral density filters. These little glass thingies that are dark that you screw on your lens. These don't, these aren't Instagram filters, right? These don't add crazy weird effects to your lens. They just darken stuff. They help you control light so that you can maintain that 150th shutter. So factor that in, especially for daytime use. You won't need these at night. There's all sorts of like $20 NDs out there that are just awful. So watch out for that. Uh, I'll link up the good ones below. There you go. Okay, switching gears into nighttime lenses. The night shooting experience is such a different experience overall to me. During the day, you're on the move, you need that versatility of a zoom lens, but at night, you're usually in camp. When you're, when you're a backpacker or hiker, you usually by then you're in camp, you're stationary. And changing lenses is no longer a hard thing to do. You could do that. You could, you could change lenses 10 times and it wouldn't be the end of the world. So, uh, given that, I like to opt for prime lenses. Prime lenses that are better in low light. They tend to be sharper. And uh, I'm going to start with my favorite of those lenses, the Sigma 16mm 1.4 lens. This little guy right here, it's a pound. It's not too big. It's very versatile. You can capture everything from wide landscapes to uh, selfie. You can get selfie shots with this if you want to. And uh, what, I, what I love about it is the f1.4 aperture, which means the iris gets really big. The little thing inside lets in more light. And that means it is awesome for Milky Way shots. All the Milky Way shots, all the star shots in Highline were all shot with the Sigma 16mm 1.4. And uh, the coolest part is it's really affordable. <laughs> this is like a $400 lens. And I know $400 isn't, it's not chump change. But for a lens, that's a steal. That's a really good deal. So totally recommend it. 16mm 1.4. It's great. My second favorite nighttime lens is the uh, Sigma 30mm 1.4 lens. I primarily use this really like in morning, like super early morning or in evening hours for dialogue. Well, today was definitely one of the hardest days of hiking that I've ever had. And it's also a great focal length for um, sliders. So I used it heavily on a dolly to get those sliding shots. There's one downside you should be aware of, which is that the autofocus is clicky. It goes like click, 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 click. That was really annoying and it did, you know, it did ruin a couple of dialogue moments and that bugged me. But uh, yeah, just watch out for that. Kind of my fault. Really, when you're shooting that kind of stuff, you should be in manual mode and I was being lazy and I used autofocus, but you know, there you go. Good lens, sharp, light, affordable as well. Just be very aware of that clicky sound. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you don't want to carry like a billion different lenses around. You're thinking like, Chris, what's wrong with you? You're crazy. You're weird. And you would be very right. I am weird. I'm a very flawed individual. But if I had to choose just one lens, if I want to be crazy, fast and light, but still maintain really good quality, it would be the Sigma 16mm 1.4 lens. It is wide enough to selfie with. You can capture all sorts of landscapes with it. And it is low light capable to the point where you can get Milky Way shots out of it. So morning until Milky Way, this is great. And the the focus distance is actually really good, so you can get like semi-intimate looking shots if you get really close, which is weird for a 16 mil, but it works. So great lens, and the cool thing is it's one of the most affordable lenses that I mentioned today. So it's like 400 bucks, good lens, one pound, totally recommend it. So if I was gonna bring two lenses, right? I'm going crazy now. <laughs> Instead of just the one lens, if I, if I was gonna bring two, if I wanted to add one, one more lens to that kit, it would be this guy. This is the Sony 16 to 55 millimeter that I mentioned earlier. This will be my daytime lens. So I can, you know, zoom in, I can get nice, you know, semi close up shots, wide shots, and it is low light capable from morning until dusk. And then after dusk, I would switch to that other 16 mil Sigma. So that's it. I hope you guys had fun. I will link up all the products mentioned uh, down in the description below. And I will also link up HighlineFilm.com. Highline is the film that we worked on. A lot of us worked really hard on that, that project. So check it out. And you could also see the results of the gear that you just saw. And uh, yeah, till next time. Peace out, homies.